American football is a sport loved across the world, or at least just America, and throwing the perfect football spiral is a hard task, and since we're not actually there to teach you how to throw a spiral, let's just talk about the math and see if that'll help. There are a few principles at work in a flying football, like gyroscopic precession and parabolic motion. Looking back to some basic physics classes, we can understand the way a football flies depends on the launch angle and the speed it's thrown at. However, you can throw a football as hard as you want. That doesn't guarantee that it will fly in a perfect spiral. In order to get an American football to fly perfectly, we have to be a little more concerned with inducing gyroscopic precession. Gyroscopic precession has to do with the change of an object's rotational axis when subjected to an outside torque, and it's crucial to a quarterback's success. A good spiral spins at about 600 RPM, or the equivalent of a CD in a CD player. As the football spins, it engages in gyroscopic motion. The core principle of gyroscopes is that they take a lot of outside force to interrupt their motion. When a spinning football flies through the air, gravity pulls the nose of the football downward in a parabolic shape, like any object. The same principles of all parabolic motion act on the football, but because it's spinning, it becomes much more stable and resistant to other external forces. Due to the gyroscopic effects of a spinning football, the way the ball behaves in the air actually varies based on on whether the quarterback is right or left-handed. A ball thrown by a right-handed quarterback will curve slightly to the right, and a ball thrown by a left-handed quarterback would do just the opposite. Understanding this is essential to throwing an accurate pass. Now, adding more spin to the ball isn't all that throwing a good spiral needs. A faster spinning ball will take up more proportion of the imparted energy to continue spinning than to continue moving forward. Essentially, if a quarterback has a limited amount of energy, you wouldn't want to waste all of that energy getting the ball to spin and the ball just only be thrown a few feet. This all means that quarterbacks can actually lose yardage when they impart more spin to a ball. It's all about finding a happy medium. The ball needs a necessary amount of spin to attain proper gyroscopic motion while also maximizing the forward velocity to maximize range. The launch angle is another fairly simple aspect of a football pass, but one that is essential to mastering the game. Like any other trajectory, the maximum distance can be achieved with a launch angle of 45 degrees. At higher than 45 degrees, the height will be maximized, and at lower angles, the ball will likely not travel as far as you need it to. The spin of a football is all about accuracy. The more consistently you can control a football's spin, the better you'll be at throwing the perfect and and accurate spiral. Throwing a perfect football may be easy to understand from a mathematics and physics perspective, but mastering the art is a completely different challenge. If you were to give any random high school physics student a problem involving a quarterback moving side to side and a running receiver going back and forth, it would likely be one of the most difficult parabolic motion problems they've ever completed. Yet, good quarterbacks can perfectly take into account launch angle, velocity, and spin to perfectly place a football in the hands of a receiver down the field. Who knew quarterbacks were so good at math?